But will it scale? You might have heard someone ask this question, especially if you work in a tech company, trying to, you know, sound smart and all. But this is actually a great question. Uh, this is a question that is really important when it comes to designing, um, you know, applications and network and systems uh, with the user um, in mind. Hi, my name is William Pujar and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Stactical. Um, I wanted to share a quick update about a cool, I think, a uh, product that we've been working on for the past uh, weeks also within the framework of a uh, W3F uh, grant uh, application that we won. So yay, we are officially W3F uh, grant recipient. Um, this grant has enabled us to create a product that will hopefully bring value to the Substrate and Polkadot communities and especially Polkadot network researchers that are struggling right now with uh, performance testing and all the guesswork involved in capacity planning and, and scalability work in general. So introducing Will Scale Polkadot, uh, the very first predictive analysis platform for block, blockchain network researchers. The purpose of this platform is, you know, as the title says, to predict the scalability of Substrate and Polkadot networks. Um, typically, as a Polkadot network researcher, you would spend really a lot of time, you know, um, provisioning testnet uh, in different configuration, in different parachain scenarios, um, running hundreds, if not thousands, uh, of performance tests and really chart the scalability chart of um, Polkadot yourself. Take a step back and look at the chart trying to figure out how the system scales and what kind of uh, decision you should make, what kind of trade-off be between security, uh, uh, scalability and uh, whatever thing in your trilemma needs to be. And Will Scale Polkadot is a way to really outsource all of this work to uh, the machine and, and let the algorithm do the guesswork uh, for you. So with only 10 performance measurements instead of hundreds of thousands, you will be able to chart the scalability of your system and quantify actual scalability bottlenecks. But more about that later. Reading at the... Um, repository right now you have the oh yeah the general platform architecture so the project is comprised really of three main components the will scale our server which is a http server that is actually the one doing the prediction using the r statistical programming language which is a nat, a nice um, alternative to python uh, at times so it's really a data science uh, server that is uh, uh, using uh, you know the language the language R which is pretty popular among uh, the data science community then you have the will scale API which is a GraphQL API uh, which purpose is really to you know implement the business logic of, of predictions but also um, you know communicate simply communicate and forward requests to the will scale uh, R server and then you have the will scale client, which is at this stage just a chart uh, that is using whatever is returned by the will scale API uh, to you know display the scalability chart in a, a human readable format because you need to keep thinking about uh, human as well, even though this is all robot and bot and and not AI but statistical uh, driven. So the rest of the readme is pretty straightforward. You can build stuff, run stuff, try stuff out. We are actually going to copy this, which is a GraphQL um, mutation. Um, this is the actual request that we are going to submit to the Willyscale API GraphQL server in order to, you know, get a prediction in return from the work of the uh, Willyscale R server, if that makes any sense. Uh, but before that. Let's get back to the actual terminal. So the terminal, I have cloned the repository, the real scale Polkadot repository. You can see a bunch of folders in it, the R server, the API, and the client, so the three main components. There are a couple of other stuff as well. 
so uh, don't don't hesitate to dive a bit into it. But these are really the the freestyles of the show. And you can see that in each of these folders, I've run a couple of commands to run the actual components. So uh, my willitscale R server is running in the Docker com container right now. The API is running, running and spoiling actually, no spoiler. So I'm going to try to uh, build it and run it again. Uh, even though my computer is rather slow right now, so hopefully this will work uh, within the context uh, of the demo. You can tell that I'm trying to buy it sometime right now. Uh, and yeah, and we have the client uh, which is running on the port 8080 as well. So everything, nearly everything should be um, running right now. I think that... Okay, maybe I'm just going to, you know, just run the server instead of building it. Because the computer is dying. Alright, and since I've built this over and over and over again. Alright, so the scalability prediction API is ready right now. Take that, Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the documentation, um, I I have copied the um, mutation and I'm going to submit it to what they call the GraphQL Playground. So when you run um, the server, the, the, the wizardry that I've just did right there on the port 10,000, you can see the port 10,000 there. Along with your server, there's this, this uh, web application that is running that enables you to communicate with the Willyscale API GraphQL server, right? And you will be able to submit the mutation to the API so that it can be forwarded to the R server and then you get back the prediction in this very screen in the Willyscale client but also in the terminal. We are going to start with the terminal but first things first we need to explain what this mutation is about. So you can see that it's a predict capacity mutation. We are currently supporting two types of mutations. So the ability to predict the capacity of a system, of a blockchain network, but also the ability to predict the latency uh, of a blockchain network. We are only going to demonstrate predict capacity for now. And you can see that the uh, argument of this mutation is a bunch of points, right? Let's purify this. So each PRT XP sequence uh, results or whatever you, you'd like to call it is actually um, a result from a benchmarking that was run against a tested, any kind of tested system. In that specific case, this is a privately deployed Ethereum uh, testnet uh, with up to 20 nodes that have been used to generate these benchmarking results. So the p-value is actually representing the number of nodes in the network. The RT value is the measured response time in terms of the time it takes for a transaction to be validated on my private Ethereum node. And the XP value is actually the famous or infamous transaction per second uh, metric, so TPS. So by using node response time and TPS, formatting it like that, and sending it through the predict capacity mutation to will scale Polkadot, you can get actually um, a prediction that will enable you to draw the scalability chart of this thing way beyond 20 nodes and to know how your system behaves under node. You can see that it works. This is the response, which is a serialized JSON of more p-value, more xp-value. Since this is predicting capacity and not latency, we are not using RT for the prediction, uh, but we have also extra capacity information there as well as bottlenecks because again the system is able to you know scale depending on the level of scalability bottlenecks it is experiencing and will scale polkadot actually lets you quantify 
those bottlenecks. So getting back to the API, now I can spoil it. Uh, you can see that the contention penalty for the private tested Ethereum network is 20%. The coherency penalty is 2%. The peak capacity is 5.8 nodes, so 6 nodes. The peak capacity is 83 transactions per second. And the general accuracy for my prediction is 99.6%. So not too shabby, pretty good. Feeling good ab about this one, I guess. And um, focusing on the contention penalty and the coherency penalty, this is really interesting. This is interesting in the sense that we can see that Ethereum are actual deployment experiences a 20% contention penalty, meaning that the system struggles to execute transaction in parallel. And this is an actual quantified way to drive um, act act architectural decision in your system, such as using sidechains or using parachains or any kind of sharding mechanism. So you can imagine that using parachain and using uh, this kind of specialized blockchains with parallel com computation capabilities, you will reduce the contention of your network. So this will make your network scale further than a typical blockchain that is struggling to run things in parallel and that tends to run them sequentially, right? On the contrary, you can see that the system is not really suffering for coherency at all because it doesn't have too big of a deal uh, synchronizing the state across the different nodes and making sure that the coherency in terms of data representation um, is there. Meaning that if you're using, for example, a system uh, with a shared storage, any kind of shared storage of any kind of shared resource, really, you need to make sure that the system remained, uh, remain coherent, uh, meaning that all the actors, all the players in your system have uh, up-to-date information about the state, up-to-date information about the storage, etc. This is what coherence is about, and you can see that this system is not particularly struggling with that. But maybe if you had a bunch of parachain doing their own things, coherency will, on the contrary, increase a bit. And maybe that's the actual, I'm saying maybe, but this is actually the reason why, one of the reasons why the number of uh, parachains available at launch for the Polkadot uh, version 1 of the network will be limited. Because if you add too much uh, parachains, you are introducing a risk of coherency, even though parachain are supposed to provide better, uh, so less contention, uh, basically. Moving on, peak capacity for P, peak capacity for XP, um, six nodes, 83 TPS, the infamous TPS metric is there, uh, except it's been calculated through a scientific approach. And this could be actually used as a basis to also debunk some of the claims that are being made in the space in terms of TPS. You need to understand that at the end of the day, it's always a trade-off when it comes to designing this kind of system. And you can perfectly see wheel scale Polkadot as a way to quantify uh, these different trade-offs and to really drive your decisions uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve in terms of scalability, security, etc. Whatever your trilemma is, really. So getting back to the browser, the human-friendly stuff, this is the Willy Scale client. So this is an actual visual representation of the scalability of your blockchain network. You can see that after, indeed, pretty much six nodes and 83 TPS, it's 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 dumping. It's 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 dumping pretty bad. The scalability is getting wrecked, I would say, and you can see that the more nodes, the worse it gets. You know, so that was um, exactly what we were seeking in terms of insight um, when you know trying to build this this platform. What kind of really diminishing return you can expect? 
as you grow the number of nodes uh, in, your, in your system and what kind of boosts you can expect in terms of, um, you know, uh, maybe contention, coherency, depending on the choices, the different choices that you are going to make. You can see that along with the capacity prediction, we have the latency prediction. And the latency prediction and really having the two predictions come into play is a great way to not only understand what's your best bang for your buck in terms of fuel, uh, firepower, fuel, fuel TPS, but also understand what kind of response time you can expect uh, at, at peak capacity, you know? Because if you have 83 TPS, but it takes hours uh, for your system to validate transactions, uh, it's not useful. And it, it's going to be disappointing from a uh, an user perspective. You want to strike the right balance between the theoretical peak capacity of your system, but also what users are expecting um, in terms of uh, response time. So this is what this is about. Hopefully you like it. Don't hesitate to check out the repository and get involved with the project. I'm really excited to see how this evolves over time and what kind of interesting things we will be able to surface with more data and more enthusiasm um, regarding the, the, the project and this uh, open source initiative. Thank you very much and talk to you soon. Bye.